Hey guys, it's Andrew Tobayevsky here, which is Andy, and this is Quick Maths. And today we're looking at circle theorems, GCC maths, with a simple explanation and exam tips and tricks. This theme was suggested by my good friend Toby Bridger, or just Toby. I will leave a link in the description so you can check his Instagram out if you want to. Okay, so circle theorems, what actually are they? The explanation used by BBC Bite Size states Circles have different angle properties described by theorems. There are seven circle theorems, which is not exactly true to be honest, uh, because in reality there are eight theorems for GCSE level, and Hergerty Maths even provides a ninth one, not using GCSE exams, but we are not going to look at that one today, as we are a GCSE based channel, or at least for now. So what is the actual definition? Circle theorems are proven rules which work for all circles, helping us to find the necessary angles and sides, which we need to know for some reason for our GCSE. Don't really know why, but we just have to know them. <laughs> okay, so um, here they are. These are provided by Corbett Maths, and there are eight main ones we're going to look at today. Okay, so the first one. Angle at centre and the circumference. The official fancy definition of it is the angle subtended by an arc at the centre is twice the angle subtended, well, created by an object, like a cord, uh, at the circumference. So, the simple definition which you can find at the bottom, is angle at centre as well as the angle at the circumference. That's all you need to know. Now, looking at the animation, uh, which I'm going to play in just a moment, you're going to see that when we have a central angle, which is 100 degrees in this case, the angle at the circumference is always going to be 50 degrees. No matter where it's placed, it's always going to be two times smaller than the actual angle at the centre. So here, uh, in the animation, you can see that the angle at the circumference is moving but its value doesn't change. Now if we move the bottom point we can see that the angle of the centre is now 50 degrees so the angle of the circumference is uh, two times smaller and it's 25 degrees. Now we can even get quite a weird shape like the one you can see on the screen but it just doesn't matter. You just need to recognize that if you have an angle at the center and you have an angle at the circumference, the angle at the circumference is always going to be two times smaller than the one at the center. Okay, uh, so circle theorem two. Angles at semicircle. Official fancy definition, as always. <laughs> a triangle in a circle with a diameter as one of its sides forms a right angle at the circumference. By the way, all of these are provided by Hergesy Maps and you can check them out. So, simple definition, angle opposite the diameter is always, always 90 degrees. It doesn't change, no matter what circle you have. Here you can have a look at the animation and see that it actually doesn't change. Even if we move the point, it stays at 90 degrees. So, off to circle theorem 3. Now, angles from the same arc. The official fancy definition, as always, angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are equal. So, opposite angles of the bow tie shape are the same. That's how I like to think of it. You can see that the shape formed kind of looks like a bow tie, so uh, that's how I always think of it when I try to apply this theorem. You need to recognize that this theorem might be similar to the first one in some cases, but for the third theorem, all the points, so all the points, so all the four points we can see, they all lie on the circumference. Unlike in the first theorem, where there's a point in the centre, which forms an angle at the centre. So they're not the same. Just need to recognise that. So uh, from the animation, we can see that even if the bow tie <laughs> gets smaller, so even up to three degrees, you can still see that the angles are actually the same. So the opposite angles of the bow tie shape. Okay, off to circle theorem 4 now. Oh no, sorry, it's off to a key point now. So, we've got our diagram. And what we can see is that these angles, these opposite angles, are the same, so both 50 degrees, as they're subtended by the same arc. So what does that mean? Now, if we have a look at the actual arc which they stand on, so part of the circumference, and we look at the drawing where we have the green line and the blue one, um, we recognize that they actually stand on legs as I like to call them. They share the same arc of the circle. If they share the same arc of the circle, that means that the lengths 
are the same and therefore the angles are the same. So just need to recognize that whenever you have two angles which share the same arc of the circle, so part of the circumference, then they're going to be the same. This is the key point to remember. Okay, uh, circle theorem number four, angles are a cyclic quadrilateral. So the official definition of rule four, so this one I actually quite like from Purgative Maths, it's not too complicated, so I use that as my definition as well. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum up to 180 degrees. The green angles, we've got 80 degrees and 100 degrees, obviously 100 plus 80 is 180, so the theorem works, and the yellow ones are also 100 and uh, 80 degrees, so 180 degrees in total. Now note that cyclic is a polygon uh, with all vertices on the circumference. So this is what it actually means. If any of its points, points of the quadrilateral, don't actually lie, so they don't touch the circumference, then it's not a cyclic or a cyclic quadrilateral, as some people call it. Um, and so therefore this theorem cannot be applied to it. So just be aware of that. Now. Here is a diagram which shows the cyclic quadrilateral and the non-cyclic quadrilateral. So that, this is what I'm talking about. As you can see in the non-cyclic one, there's a point which lies at the centre, which means not all of its points are touching the circumference, only three out of the four, so the theorem cannot be applied. Okay, so circle theorem five. Angles at alternate segments. Official definition, rule five. Right, this might be quite complicated. Uh, the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the opposite angle at the circumference in the alternate segment. Now, that sounds really quite complicated, so let's actually figure out what it says. So, tangent is a line touching the circle at one point. So, you can see on the diagram, it's just a line that just goes next to the circle and just touches at one little point. It's also used in graphs and pretty much all areas of maths, especially in geometry and graphs. So a chord is a line with points at the circumference and they are actually the sides of the triangle. I like to think of chords as in they split the circle into segments. Now where a segment is a part of a circle cut with a straight line or a chord in this case. So that's the simple definition of them. Now if you look at the diagram we can see that the angles in alternate segments are the same. So let's actually divide them Let's look at the green angles and divide them with the line. So divide the two segments we have formed. There we go. This is a green line dividing the two segments. We've got the top one, so the one on the right, and we've got a bottom one, the one on the left. So the bottom one is the big one and the top one is the small one, where the angle of 56 degrees is, and the big one is when the where the other angle of 56 degrees is, but it's inside the triangle. There you can see it. Now, as for the orange one, we do the same. We'll also split into two segments. And we look for the opposite angle, as shown by the arrows. Now, this is the tangent, as I've already explained. And this is the chord. The orange one is also the chord. And the, uh, so you say, bottom line of the uh, triangle is also a chord. All right, off to circle theorem 6. Angle between tangent and radius. The official definition, rule 6, is a tangent and radius always meet at 90 degrees. As I've said, it's the easiest rule to remember, so yeah, there's not really much to it. Where there's a tangent, and if there's a radius coming towards it, then it's always going to be at a 90 degrees angle. Circle theorem 7. Two tangents to circle from a point. Right, the official fancy definition is, from an external point there are two tangents that can be drawn to a circle and length of each tangent to the circle is the same. Okay, so, if two straight lines are drawn from the same point and touch the circle once, they're equal. That's the simple definition and we're going to watch the animation, uh, but from the initial drawing you can already see that CB is 10 and DB is also 10, so if you draw two tangents, to from one point to the circle then they're always going to be the same quite important for GCSE level so if you look at the animation we can see that the actual length of the two lines from the point uh, ch changes as well but the lines the length of the lines stays the same so here we, here we can see that both of them are at um, 4.45 me centimeters meters whatever now so it doesn't matter where the point is, as long as two tangents are drawn from that point and they actually touch the circle once, hence their tangents, then their length is going to be the same. 
Circle Theorem 7. Now, Circle Theorem 8, the last one we were going to cover, uh, is the perpendicular bisector of a chord. So, Mr. Hergerty has said, a line from the center of the circle that meets a chord at right angles must bisect the chord. So, it's quite, it's just quite simply a line from the center splits the chord in two, and it splits into two right angles, as you can already see from the diagram. Okay, so now let's look at the exam question. Question 24 from AQA New Practice Paper Set 1, September 2015, Paper 3. Here's the question, and um, I must say this is this was one of the harder questions, and for circle theorems, you generally get 3, 4, 5, 6 markers, with uh, 5 and 6 markers being the most, the most common, and I think this question should have at least been 5 marks, at least 5 marks, um, because I think that for how complex it is, it's not too complex, but I think it's up there with the hard questions. I think that full marks is not enough for it, but I don't make the exam board, I'm not part of it, so so yeah, we're just gonna look at the question right now. <laughs> Alright, so here are the statements we have to tick whether they're true or false and then give a reason for it. Now if you look at the diagram you can see all the angles and then the instruction says tick whether each statement is true or false and give a reason for your answer as I've already said. Okay, so let's actually look at the answers for this question. So AC is a diameter. Now, if you want to just go back in the video and have a look at the diagram and actually answer the questions yourself and then just check the answers with my ones, then that'll be fine. <laughs> so AC is a diameter, it's actually false because uh, the angle opposite the diameter is 92 degrees in this case, not 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Angle ADC is 88 degrees. Now that is true, because ABCD is a cyclical diatral, so opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So angle ADC is 180 minus 92, which is equal to 88. ABCD is the trapezium. That is true. Why? Because alternate angles ACD and CAB are equal to 50 degrees. I mean, AB is parallel to DC and is a trapezium. Uh, a trapezium has to have two parallel sides, hence it's called a trapezium, not just a quadrilateral. And lastly, DE is a tangent to the circle. That is actually false because angle DAC is 42 degrees, but must be 32 degrees if DE is a tangent to the circle, due to the alternate angle theorem. Okay, if, if I just go back to the diagram right now, here it is, here you can see it, and I hope the answers make more sense now once you've had a look at the diagram. And this is it guys, it's the end of the video, so thank you very much for checking out this video. It's Quick Maths with Andy, and I've taken most of my material from Hergerty Maths, Corbett Maths, GeoGebra, and BBC Writers, so if you want to go on the websites to practice the questions, then I would advise you to do so, because this is a topic which, in order to master, you need to actually practice and complete many 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 questions and it's actually quite helpful that AUQA and Churchill Maths and other practice papers like the Corbett Maths ones as well they actually provide a lot of uh, the circle theorems questions because they make up quite a big part of GCSE and they are the top mark questions which you need to know. Hello guys thank you very much for checking out this video and as always check out my future videos and my old ones as well um, and Please, uh, please feel free to write in the comment section below what topics you want me to cover and then I will feature you in the next video, so like your name, your username, whatever you actually want. And I would just like to say thanks to uh, Reese Roberts and John Ott, uh, which are my friends and they just wanted to get shouted out in the video and they're providing support for my channel, so thank you to them. And as always guys, Minimum effort, maximum gain. That's what we do on this channel. See you in future videos. And don't forget about that subscribe and notification button. Almost forgot, I will also be doing a separate video on the t-shirt I'm wearing right now. It's actually a price t-shirt for Google Coding, for the Google Coding challenge of 2019-2020. You can even see it on the sleeve. Here it says Google. So I'll be making a separate video on the t-shirt I'm wearing right now so you can check it out and hopefully participate in the future challenges of 2020 and 2021. See ya.